Hey everybody, welcome back to another video here on the Washington Football Maniacs channel. Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, I hope you all had a wonderful holiday. I know besides watching a very bad beatdown um, at the hands of the San Francisco 49ers, we'll talk about that briefly, uh, but if you're new here, please consider subscribing to the Washington Football Maniacs. I try to put, that, put out videos on a regular basis, whatever that looks like. Without, with that said, let's get into today's video, shall we? So, of course, the Washington Commanders lost um, what I felt was a crucial game. I felt like this was a game that they needed to win because you've got... You had the Detroit Lions, the Seattle Seahawks, Green Bay Packers, all of these teams knocking on our, our doorsteps. Now, we we got lucky in the sense that the Seattle Seahawks and the Detroit Lions lost. The Giants got beat uh, with that 60-some yard field goal attempt at the last second at the hands of the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, now, that didn't really matter to us as much because, of course, you know, the Giants still hold the, the tiebreaker against us. But just the fact that they lost, that keeps them within reach. But the fact that those other two mentioned teams lost, it keeps us in that seventh seed. But the Green Bay Packers are on a hot streak right now. And... We have got to see those Packers lose. Now, if those Packers continue to win out and Washington is not able to take care of business against the Browns and the Cowboys, then, well, obviously we don't deserve to make the postseason anyway. But having said all that, uh, talking about the, the game against the San Francisco 49ers, it's a very tough game. The 49ers had a stout defense. We all knew that coming in. Boza just had, I mean, he did Boza things, right? Charles Leno had a tough game. He had a very tough game. Anybody who lines up against Boza is going to have a tough game against Boza. But, you know, despite all of that, the commander's offense was able to move the ball. After a tough, shaky start, they were able to move the football. And that, in that first half, I thought that Taylor Heineke had a solid game. I thought, honestly, he had one of his best games in, in this season. And it was just ironic that because I thought that was the game that he got pulled for Carson Wentz. And I really felt, though, that I think everybody felt that Carson Wentz was going to enter this game at some point because I think Ron Rivera had that itchy trigger finger. And the funny thing is... We all saw it coming, and I felt that Carson Wentz, the only way we were not going to see him in this game was if, A, of course, we're, you know, the Commanders won this game, and two, for Taylor Heineke to have a perfect game. Perfect game, in which that the Commanders never trailed in this game, and you know, they just had a dominant game. We knew this was not going to happen in the least, but afterwards, of course, Ron Rivera was asked who was going to start, and this is what Ron Rivera is going to say about who's going to start against the Cleveland Browns. One thing, we were going to throw the ball, and we didn't need them to just tee off on the guy. So we wanted to, to give Carson a shot and let him throw the ball around a little bit and see where he is. And just real quick on that, is this... Carson going forward, or? No, we're going to evaluate the tape. We'll talk about those things, and uh, I'll make a decision next week. I'll make it early, too, because whoever's going to start is going to get the chance to work. Okay, so, Ron Rivera says, sorry, I, I started to pause it a little bit too early, but Ron Rivera says that he's going to make the decision, he's going to make it early. He's going to look at the tape and decide who's going to start and he's going to make that decision early because he wants them to have the benefit of having taken all the snaps throughout the entire week and being ready for the Cleveland Browns. Now, that to me points to Carson Wentz. Here's why I say that. Because, obviously, Carson Wentz came off the bench. He looked solid. He looked really good. 
Um, you know, they, he took them down, scored that touchdown. Uh, of course, didn't get the two point conversion. Would have if they did, would have kept them within that uh, one score uh, possession. Of course, you know, <laughs> horrible, horrible uh, uh, onside kick attempt that I probably could have done a better job with. Don't know what Sly was thinking, but you know, I will say. <laughs> Onside kick attempts are few and far between successful in the NFL, and that was that had no chance whatsoever. Uh, but other, other than that, you know, Carson Wentz looked really good. He looked really good coming off the bench, and he made decisive throws. Um, he looked really good out there. But let, let's not... Let's go through the smoke and mirrors of all of this. I've seen this so many times in my 40 plus years of watching football that a quarterback comes off the bench late in the game and he looks really good. And why does he look really good? Despite the fact that he's still having pressure on him with the front four, the front three, still rushing, you know, the the passer. Why does he look good? Well, it's because that day they're calling, you know, plays that are designed to get the football out of his hands quickly to make quick decisions, to move the football, to to throw the football underneath. Two, because the defensive secondary is playing soft zone, they're trying to to avoid giving up, you know, prevent defense almost, right? They're trying to give up the big play. So that those two things in, in combination with each other is going to make the quarterback look really good coming off the bench. And that, that's something you got to take into consideration when you look at the performance of Carson Wentz. Now, that is not to take away from how Carson Wentz looked. He looked really good. You know, coming back after being, you know, on the bench for so long and I mean, he did. He looked really solid. He made good decisions, and then that pass to Curtis Samuel for the touchdown was great. Um, so my hat's off to Carson Wentz for his performance. Now, I would say that as far as evaluating the tape, the the game tape, and and looking at, you know, what if you're saying that then. You should say then that obviously you're looking at Taylor Heineke. He had his best game, I thought, of his you know of his whole time starting. So why would there be any decision? There should be a decision of keeping Heineke in. If he played well, why was he even you know why was he given the hook? Well, I think there's. There's a couple of decisions that go into that. I think, number one, I think the fact that the commanders were not scoring. Uh, I think, number two, because of that, you did see some passes from Taylor Heineke that showed his inability to get the ball down the field in a way to where a much stronger quarterback would make those passes that would cause that uh, that wide receiver to be able to catch those passes in stride and score quickly. Instead, those passes become almost 50-50 passes because they're underthrown more than, than not. Those re- receivers have to stop, make adjustments, and a lot of times it allows the defenders to be able to recover to try to knock the passes away or to, to at least defend those passes to where it's going to be tough for the receivers to make the catches. That's why you see Terry McLaurin or Jahan Dotson making these spectacular catches because a lot of times Heineke is under throwing those passes or he's just off. And, you know, so I think because you're seeing, you know, just Taylor Heineke just really not making very strong passes down the field. It it is drive um, stoppers, so to speak. And, you know, and on top of that, it's just, it makes it 
a lot tougher when you get into the uh, red zone because, you know, he, he's really, I, I think that just honestly, honestly, you need a stronger quarterback that's going to be able to make decisive throws. And I'm not sure, sometimes you see it. Sometimes you see Taylor Heineke making these decisive throws, putting the ball where nobody else is going to be able to get to it but his receiver. But you, but it's few and far between, right? But he's a baller, and people love him. I love him to death. I love to watch Taylor Heineke play. But at some point, I think he ha- does hit a ceiling. And I think his ceiling is starting to reach the point to where, honestly, you know, you're you're going to need a quarterback who's going to be stronger, who's going to be able to get those tough yards, especially quarterback sneak situations. I think that's where you start to see the limitations with Heineke as opposed to a stronger guy with Carson Wentz. And I think those are the things that Ron Rivera is looking at. And I think that's what is going to come into making his decision. Because... You're getting to the point of the season where you need a guy like Carson Wentz who's going to be stronger, who's been in that situation, who can get those tough yards, who can make those passes that can really become the decision between winning the football games or losing the football games. And, you know, obviously I'm a huge Taylor Heineke fan. I would much rather see Heineke than Wentz. But... I also recognize the fact that when it comes down to the mechanics, Wentz is going to win hands down. But Heineke, I think, still gives you the best chance to win because he's going to escape um, sacks more often than what Wentz will. And I think that Heineke gives you the better chance to win behind a porous offensive line. And that's what gives me pause when it comes to putting Wentz in at starting the quarterback position. But I think we will say, I will say this, things have changed since the start of the season. I think the offensive line has played better. We have obviously established a much stronger running game. And because of that, the offensive line has played better. So we're going to have to see what happens. I will say my prediction is, and you will know it by the time this video probably comes out, but Wentz will probably likely be the starter this Sunday. And if he plays well and is able to beat the Cleveland Browns, then he will be your starter against the Cowboys. And if he's not able to win this Sunday, it's really not going to matter because the Commanders in all likelihood, will be eliminated from the playoffs. And at that point, we will be searching for another quarterback next year anyway. That being said, happy, happy, happy. Let me know in the comments section what you think. Um, And with that said, we'll get on to the next video. Hey, you stayed until the very end. Thank you so much. Watch another one right now.